Hello and welcome back to another episode of the True Crime Story. I love doing this. I've been searching cases, so many crime stories, and it just freaks the shit out of me. Like, you, these situations to these people happen so randomly and so unexpectedly that you never know when you're gonna be one of them. It's just freaky, so please be safe wherever you are. So before I begin telling you guys the true crime story of today, I want you guys to subscribe and like this video if you liked it. Or if you want to see more content on this page, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. It would mean a lot to me. It's going to help me a lot in the future. And I'm to... This is my sister's alarm. She has to go to work now. And it's so... Let's begin. Remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon. I'm gonna wait actually. I'm waiting. Have you subscribed yet? <laughs> this true crime story is about Matrice. Richardson and she was an American woman at the age of 24 was when she disappeared and she was found a year later. Hear this whole case out because you'll be surprised how ridiculous the police was in this case. It kind of feels like that they were hiding something so was it a cover-up? Stay tuned and watch and here the whole story. Matrice was the daughter of Latisse Santon, and I apologize, I'm not pronouncing the surname right. I'm gonna put it on the screen. And the father was Michael Richardson. Michael Richardson was with her till the age of four when he got arrested. He worked at a five fast food industry, like you know, fast food restaurant, McDonald's, like etc. I think. And Obviously, fast food restaurants do not pay you much and having children and a family is difficult to, you know, handle when you're working in a place that doesn't pay you much. So, this whole situation led Michael to start selling drugs. He did not want to sell drugs, but because of the whole situation, he had to make money on the side and selling drugs was easy money he would get a lot of money at a time by selling drugs and um i guess it's just if you're in trouble and you don't know where to look you just find the worst ways to help yourself and the whole society we're living in right now is just so corrupt that there's more bad options than good options so after the whole situation of uh, Matrice's father selling drugs and working at the fast food, he got caught and he was prisoned for eight years and behind his back, Latisse was not ready to wait for him because she had a daughter and obviously if I had a daughter, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know, I, it's not my mindset to look for other guys, but if... In her scenario, I understand that it was not her fault to find someone else to settle down with when she had a daughter because it's difficult without a male figure in your life to live. And in Hong Kong, in my situation, it's quite easy. But in America or like in Pakistan or all these countries, it's a little difficult to live by eight years without demand figure in your life who would earn, who would, you know, protect you. You know, I understand what Latisse did was right for her and her daughter. So at the time when Michael was in the jail for eight years, Latisse found um, Matrice's stepfather, Larry Sutton, and they moved to Coneva, California because there was some riots going on in their location that they were living before. So they moved to Coneva, California. Matrice was a smart and beautiful lady and 
She did a Bachelor's of Art in Psychology and she graduated in 2008 from California State University. And when she graduated, Matrice was an honors student, which means she was smart as hell. She loved dancing. She was a cheerleader in her school. Everyone loved her. She was like that happy, jolly person that, and a smart person that everybody wants to be around. And she was basically a pretty cool, smart, and a fun person to be around. At the time of her disappearance, Patrice was an open lesbian. She was dating her girlfriend, Tessa Moon, for about two years. Patrice was also working at a lesbian club on the side while planning to do her master's in psychology. She also started modeling with the club and the planning for her master's for psychology. Her father, when he was released and when he found out that Matrice was working at this club, he was a bit worried and he warned Matrice about the consequences, consequences that working in such places can have, but Matrice did not listen. She was fine. She said, I'm not doing anything bad. I'm just working and, and earning some money. Matrice started behaving very strange when she met a girl called Vanessa. Vanessa was someone who Matrice had an affection towards her. She started liking Vanessa, but the girl Vanessa did not feel the same way for Matrice as Matrice felt for her. And it was believed that Vanessa was dating someone else while this whole situation happened with Matrice. And because of this rejection from Vanessa, Matrice started behaving weird. She used to be a jolly person and after this whole situation with Vanessa, she started keeping everything to herself and if she would say something, she would say weird things or, you know, if she texts her friend, she would say weird things or and on her Facebook and MySpace, MySpace was there at that time, and she would post some weird quotes about life, you know, that would there were that were not portraying a normal person's behavior. I'm not completely sure about the Vanessa part of this story because I did not find the whole Vanessa girl's information while searching for it but there was a Vanessa present in this whole scenario of her being disappeared because I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. Of, on the evening of September 16, 2009, Matrice um, was driving along this road when she saw a restaurant named Joffrey, Geoffrey, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to put the picture or the name on the screen. Joe Expensive. This restaurant was very expensive and a very high quality restaurant. They had valet parking. You can already tell this restaurant is expensive. So when Matrice entered the valet parking, the guy was busy parking someone else's car and he told Matrice to wait for him while he parks the person's in front of Matrice's car and he'll come back and park her car. While she was waiting, she got, she got off her car and went in to the valet parking person's car and started going through his stuff. And when the person who was parking the cars in this valet parking, he came back and obviously when you see someone in your car, it's very strange. And he asked her, what are you doing? And she said, she's looking through the Michael Jackson CDs in his car. He had a lot of Michael Jackson CDs or cassettes. Listening or looking through the Michael Jackson CDs and she was avenging the death of Michael Jackson. Described by the person who was parking the cars in the valet parking lot, he described Matrice as someone who had 
hazel eyes and curly locks. She was wearing a white long sleeve t-shirt with a Bob Marley tee on the top and with wands and a pink belt in a distressed jeans. She was wearing this when she was at the restaurant. After giving her keys to the person who was parking the cars, she, she said something along the lines of, is Vanessa here? As if the person who was parking the car knew who Vanessa was. And she also mentioned about a woman with tattoo arms showing up at the restaurant. She warned the guy parking the cars about someone who, a woman with tattoo arms, could be Vanessa, but not sure who she was talking about because nobody knew who Vanessa was. And looking at this whole situation, it was very strange for the person who was parking cars because she was behaving in a strange way, but not something he would have felt threatened by. So he didn't think anything of it. He just informed the hostess in the restaurant about this girl behaving weird so they are prepared to handle if something goes wrong. After getting seated at the restaurant, Matrice ordered an Ocean Breeze cocktail with a Kobe steak. There were seven people sitting on there were seven people sitting on the table next to Matrice and they were talking when Matrice decided that she was gonna join in the conversation with them and when she joined in, she was talking random things which did not make sense. She mentioned something about her being from Mars and her going to Hawaii, but the people sitting at the table did not think anything of it. The staff at the restaurant came and even asked seven people sitting if everything was okay and they said it was strange but not something they couldn't have. After the seven people had their dinner, they were deciding to get up and leave for the day they had their food. They were now going home or wherever they were going. And Matrice decided that she was gonna tag along and, you know, get out with them. When the manager of the restaurant saw Matrice and he stopped her to ask, how are you gonna pay for the food that you ate? Because she didn't pay for it. And when she was approached by the manager, she mentioned that the people sitting on the table next to her, the seven people, were supposed to pay for her meal, but they did not pay for her. After doing that, she has to now pay for the food herself. She said, I am busted. What am I going to do? And while the manager was showing her the screen where there was all the information about her order, what she ate, she drank, she just looked at the computer screen like she was in a trance. And after that look of her being in a trance, she started saying that she was from Mars and she can pay the bill by having sex which is pretty strange and it kind of for them might have felt like she was just covering up you know for not paying for the bill but it was pretty strange for Matrice because it was not who she was and she you know after the Vanessa situation she started behaving this strange once she was the smartest girl doing masters in psychology, a cheerleader, loved dancing, was working and earning money. And now she was this strange person who was saying weird things and doing weird things at times. She emptied her pockets and showed the manager that she had no money on her. And now because the manager did not know what to do, she was not going to pay because she didn't have any money and she was behaving strange, saying weird things. They thought that she was on drugs or weed or something like that and they called the cops on her and they wanted the police to sort this issue out. And on the phone to the police, they said that Matrice refused to pay the bill and she sounded crazy 
and she might be on drugs or something. This is what they said to the police. While the police was on the way, Matrice was talking to the staff and she was mentioning stuff like she watched a soap opera on TV which told her or instructed by God that she needed to take the day off or afternoon off and here she was at the restaurant taking an afternoon off. Along with the soap opera topic, she also mentioned to the staff that she did not have parents, she was living with her grandma at the time and let me read, <laughs> I need to look at my notes to be accurate. And while she was mentioning the soap opera situation that she watched and God instructed her to be here, um, she also mentioned that she had no parents and she was living with her grandmother. And she actually didn't remember the number of her grandmother, so the staff called the grandmother and told her the whole situation of her not paying the money and them having to call the police. And Mildred did offer to did offer to pay money by her credit card number, but because of the law and you know this is a bougie restaurant, they did not want it to have any situation of them giving someone else's credit card information. So they did not take Matrice's number on the phone. They wanted her to come to the restaurant and pay for the bill but the restaurant was quite far away from their house so she couldn't make it to the restaurant when the police arrived she mentioned that she has her wallet in the car so when matrice mentioned that she had her wallet in the car the police went in and they searched the car when they searched the car the car was a mess there was stuff everywhere rubbish clothes and there were also traces of marijuana in the car. I don't know how they did it on the spot, but there were traces of marijuana there. And they did not find the wallet, her phone, or money anywhere in the car because the car was a mess. You cannot find anything in a mess. So they did not find it, but they did find her driving license. And they also saw empty bottles of alcohol in her car so they were suspecting that she was drunk or she was on drugs marijuana so because of this they did a sober ready I don't know how to say this a test to figure out if she was on drugs or an alcohol which came out negative she was sober completely sober and which was a sign that you know the situation with Vanessa really messed her up and I'm not sure if that was it or her education because psychology is about mind right maybe her studying psychology and Vanessa on situation with Vanessa on top really just messed up her mind at the end the staff decided to pay for the bill that Matrice ate at the restaurant. By this time, Matrice's mother found out that Matrice was on her way to the police station. So she called the police and she asked them about her daughter and she asked if she was being released today or tomorrow because Matrice's mother had another daughter who was 10 years old and she was sleeping at home. So. She could not go to the police station and release her today. So she was on the phone with the police station asking if her daughter was fine. She was fine. She could stay a night in the police station and she can come in the morning to get her daughter. So yeah, and the police also mentioned that when she was going to be released, they would call Matrice's mother and let them know that she was being released. At the police station, Matrice was given a misdemeanor for marijuana and was put in the cell. The thing to note is that the police did not bother to write down about Matrice's behavior that day. She was very clearly behaving really weirdly. They did not write it down in the report. Maybe people say that it is because 
they wanted to avoid paperwork or the police felt like that Matrice was fine. So they did not even bother to write about her condition. And only if, it, if they did write about her condition, maybe only if they did mention her mental health in the report, they could have held her for the mental hold thingy. I don't know what it is called, but there's a thing where they hold you if they think you have some mental issues. They would... You gotta put this on silent. So sorry. I'm like... Pretty famous. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was saying, if only they put in the report about Matrice's mental health, they would have saved her by putting her on hold and the next day her mother could pick her up. This whole thing would have never happened if only they put her health in the reports. Matrice, Matrice placed four calls from the police station to someone that was not her grandmother. She only remembered her grandmother's number, but the number that she placed the calls from the police station was not her grandmother's number. And to the policeman's luck, the calls that were supposed to be on the recorded phone was not recorded because the phone was broken. So Matrice placed those four calls on a normal phone and those weren't recorded so no one knows who she was talking to so on September 17 Matrice's mother calls the police station again to ask about her daughter and if she's fine and they said to her surprise your daughter has already been released and the time she was released it was 12 15 a.m. at night she had no phone, no money, no wallet on her, no car. She had basically nothing and she was let go at 12 a.m. at night. So far away from her house and no one dropped her to the place her, where her car was. And she was a 24-year-old girl. I mean, what the actual... And the reason why they let Matrice go was, brace yourself, they said Matrice looked fine and because of her previous record it was crystal clear so they had no point of her keeping her there plus she was an adult so they, so they let her go. So there was no point for keeping her there and they let her go at night without giving her things back. or giving at least her car back what shit was this like i'm just like so pissed off when i was researching this case and there's a lot more to be pissed about just stay tuned because of this if matrice was my daughter and she was released at night without a car without money without a phone at night in a place where it's mountains and dark, no light and so far away from home, I would be worried and panicking and that's what Matrice's mom was doing at this moment. She was worried. She started calling everybody. She called her grandmother. She called her friends asking if Matrice was there after coming from, after being released from the police station but Matrice was nowhere to be found. Matrice's mom, being so worried, she called the police station again and she asked them to report a missing person. She said she wanted to report her daughter because she did not come home after being released from the jail. And the police station said, Hello ma'am, wait for 24 hours before you report someone is missing. I mean, who even made this rule? wait for 24 hours for someone to be reported missing. A lot of the cases of people being disappeared or not being found ever again is because the police let 24 hours for someone to be disappeared or be murdered or be hidden somewhere and they are never found. 24 hours is a lot for someone to go from here to there or someone to murder and hide a body is just a lot of time. Who even made the law? 
can you please tell me who made the law? So after waiting a few hours, the police station received another call at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. And it was Bill Smith, a former retired reporter of a news channel. And he said he saw a young girl with curly hair in his backyard. And he lived in a place where it's not houses on houses on houses. It's just mountains and one house in the middle and a lot of jungle and just a lot of nature. He lived in a very natureful area, is that even a word? So it was weird for someone to be in his backyard. Bill Smith also mentioned that he asked the girl in his backyard if she was okay. And he said that she replied that she was just resting. When Bill Smith decided to have a clearer look at this woman, he was going to another window and when he reached the next window, the girl was gone. At this time, Matrice's mother was at the police station and she was filing a report for her daughter being missing. And the police mentioned about Bill Smith and they said that he saw someone in his backyard and told them that it could be Matrice. So the police station, so the policeman and Matrice's mom went to Bill Smith's house so the police took sniffer dogs to the location of Bill Smith and they did pick up Matrice's scent to the nearby neighbor's house and they lost the scent there. Four days after Matrice's disappearance, the case was now all over the news channels and it was transferred from the missing persons case to robbery and homicide cases because now it's four days someone has been missing they're either on purposely running away or they're dead so they were now transferring the case from missing to homicide and robbery first thing the police did was search matrice's car for any signs or clues to know where she was heading but honestly she wasn't expecting to be caught by the police so there was no way they could find out where she was going without her car from the police station that she did not expect to be arrested, you know. So, I mean, at least they did check the car because there's a lot of things in this case that they did not bother to check. I'll tell you guys later on. And while they were checking the car, they found Matrice's phone, the wallet and, you know, credit card. In her wallet and they were checking the credit card to see if Matrice was using or taking out some money from her card which they found and they found out that Matrice had two thousand dollars in her credit card and she could have easily paid for the bill there was also a psychologist working on this case and it was believed by the psychologist that Matrice was suffering from some kind of mental health issues it was, I think, believed that it could be bipolar, bipolar disease. The media was covering this case a lot and the police was getting a lot of hate. People were blaming the police for not dealing with this case the right way. And because a while back, there was an actor with the same situation. He got arrested and his car was also taken away from him. And when he was released, the police took him to his car so he could drive back home but they did not do the same for Matrice which is very suspicious like and the police denies knowing anything about Matrice's behavior and she was or if she was behaving weirdly one I think is because they did not write it in the report so they forgot that she was behaving weirdly or they were hiding the fact that did not they did not write it down in the reports I don't know what to think about this situation. The police looks very fishy in this case. The tension between the media, Matrice's family, and the police was rising. So at the end, Matrice's mother hired a civil rights attorney to deal with the police because they were not listening. A few months passed by and people were still passing out flyers for Matrice to see if someone saw her or you don't get any type of information or evidence about her. And people arranged a 
person search party in the area where Matrice was last seen to find anything to connect Matrice's way where she was going to find out where she went or any clue to find out anything about her but there was no evidence of her being there. After some time the police station calls Matrice's family to the station to show them the surveillance footage in the police station when Matrice was in the cell. One thing to add again, they denied having any sort of video footage of her in the police station because they said that the cameras were just for surveillance, they were not recorded. And magically at the end, they found out that it was recorded. So they now called up the family to show them the footage. And it was only possible because Matrice's mom now had a civil rights attorney. If they did not hire a civil rights attorney, they would have never ever received this footage of her and it is disappointing that police and the law could be could have so many holes for them to trick poor people who are in distress it is just disgusting and it was very clear in the video recording of her being in the police station that she was out of character the police said she looked fine to them but to her parents watching, they knew Matrice was not like that. She never behaved like that. So it was concerning and they knew that there was something wrong with her when she was at the police station. A lot of people, including Matrice's father, Michael, said that they saw Matrice along the roads they were driving. Matrice's father said he was on a highway. He saw Matrice standing there as a prostitute and he called her out and she just ran away, you know, turned around and walked away but at the end all these sighting of her were not confirmed to be her there was no clue that it was her so these sightings were all dead ends as well now moving on to how Matrice's body was found in August 2010 in the dark canyon near Santa Monica mountains it was a warm summer day. Park rangers were just inspecting the dark canyon area and beneath some bushes and leaves, they spotted a skull with some hair still on. It was a semi-decomposed naked body. And they called the police right away and they informed them about this body. The place where Matrice's body was found, it was very hard to get. There was you needed harnesses, special equipment to get there because it was a dangerous, you know, it was cliffs, rocks. This place was a very rocky and a dangerous place for someone without equipment to go. You needed harnesses to go there. You, there were deep slopes. You need to climb rocks and, you know, it was just a very difficult place to get to. And Matrice was found in that location where it is so difficult to believe that she made it there without any injuries to her body. And firstly, when Matrice's body was found, the police denied it being a crime. They suggested that Matrice was one of those two people who die each year in California by rattlesnake bites. And I'll get onto it why this is not why, how she died. And as for the nakedness of Matrice's body, they suggested that animals did it. So basically, they were saying, I saw this from a page, an article on a website. I'm going to link it in the description box. They were basically saying that the animal took off Matrice's boots, then socks, they unbuckled her belt unzipped and pulled off the jeans and removed the underwear and more. Animals did this. Now animals are after fashionable items, you know, wearing distressed jeans. Uh, she was wearing a pink crocodile belt and yeah, much more that she was wearing. Animals are interested in fashion now. Matrice's right leg 
was six feet away from her body. There was no sign of animal bites or drag marks on that leg to suggest that animals did it, which is extremely, extremely stupid of the people who studied and are selected to be police in this California police station, you know? The surprising thing to me is that her body did not have any animals bite, no drag marks. And because of how the police were putting it, her body must have been there for a year because she was found after a year. And how can animals not eat her body or try to eat her body? They took her clothes, suggested by the police, but there were no bites on her. Why would animals leave the meat that they could eat and eat clothes? I just wonder. Very deeply wonder. And I know people are wondering too, like, what the heck? Like, what the heck? There's a lot of animals in the dark canyon or any canyon. Any wild area has a lot of animals. And nobody decided, no, none of these animals decided to eat her body that was there for an year, suggested by the police. Another part the police made it look very suspicious and straight up unfair to the person who died. The pol I understand the location was very difficult to get. And, but this is a crime scene or it is some place someone died. You need to go there and look at evidence to prove that it was a natural death or a crime. The police did not even bother to go down and look at the scene. They did not take pictures of the scene. They did not look for evidence. They just did not do anything. They just called the people who found the body and they called a helicopter to take the body to the place where they would inspect the body. Closing, the only clothing recovered from the scene was her belt, her bra, her jeans, and that was it. The rest was missing. The police still thinks that animals ate it. The most annoying part is that, yeah, they didn't check the location because it was difficult to get for them. They're police. They are... They give test... I just cannot even bother with the police in this case. They took the body and they did not even test the body for any fibers, any hairs, nothing. They did not check the location where she was found. They did not check the body. They just suggested she died by an animal bite, a rattlesnake, and the rest of the clues were eaten by animals. This Matrice's mother hired someone to see Matrice's body and they found out that Matrice's skull was detached from the body and it was laying on top of her upper torso and they had one picture from the scene that the ranger took on his phone and it showed that her skull was detached and it was resting on her upper torso and her neck bones were missing it was still not suspicious enough for the police to even check and the worst part is her bones were missing but in the report by the police, it was mentioned that her body was still intact, which it was not. Matrice and the investigator that Matrice's mother hired said that Matrice's arm was flexed in a strange way, which it could never happen if she died in that location. Because there, sh there would have been something to hold her arm in that way, because you know how body, when you die, your body, you know, becomes a statue type of thing and the way she was in that location suggested that she was not there because her arm was giving out another wives. I hope you understand what I'm saying. He said because of all this evidence that was missing and could have been checked properly and dealt with proper properly, this whole situation and this case would have been dealt like in homicide. Teresa's hair was not even examined like as I said before there was nothing of her being examined the location she was at her body was not you know inspected to see if there was any type of clue on her 
Mistress's hair was not examined when her body was brought in, but there was an earring in her hair which was not hers because she was not wearing that earring on the day when she was arrested and detained in the police station. She was not wearing that earring. Mistress's teeth were a pinkish hue, which means that, you know, normally when a dead body has pinkish you know, shaded teeth. It's suggested that they are strangled to death. And if this was the case in Matrice's situation, they needed Matrice's neck bones to test if she was strangled. And this is suspicious beyond, like, thinking. Like, obviously it is so clear if someone strangled her to hide the clue of her being strangled, someone took her neck bones. I am just mind blown and annoyed in this case. Like, this is so annoying. Like, this is so clear that the police had something to do with this case. They hid something or they were trying to protect something or them. I don't know what they were doing. <sighs> and when Matrice's body was buried down, her mother asked the people to exhume her body to check again for clues but because the police did a shittiest job to collect evidence there was no evidence to again prove that this was a murder or a crime all the efforts of mistress's family and exhuming her dead body i mean Again, finding nothing because the police did the most shittiest, shittiest, shittiest job ever. Like, I feel like this case is the worst case ever. Like, beyond the worst. So, several, actually, six months after Matrice's body was recovered, her sister-in-law and a friend went to the location where Matrice's body was found with a lot of equipment, harnesses and helmets and etc. They were creating a memorial for her in the place where her body was found. And you know what they found? They found Matrice's finger bones in that location. How? They did not even take Matrice's whole body from that location. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, I just, I just give up. I'm just gonna... Bye, guys. I took a moment. I just was so furious. Like, I just feel for Matrice and her family so much. I have a small giveaway for you guys. I'm going to announce who won in my next video, which is going to be about skincare. Hooray, finally, I'm making a skincare video after you guys have been asking a ton for it and I apologize I took so long I just had to know if the things were right for my skin type to even recommend something to you guys so the giveaway is going to be with this I don't know what this is called it's like a Clarisonic but it is not from that brand it is Millie it's by Neogems Millie and it's the number three. I don't know. I've never heard of this brand, but it is pretty cool. I'm gonna show you how to. This is like sealed, and this is going to be for the winner. I have one of my own that I use, and uh, I got a new one when I was buying it for you guys. It looks like this from inside. This is amazing when you're cleansing your face um, this one is amazing and i love that this one does not rotate because i feel like that's a little bit more harsh and my skin is a little sensitive recently so i prefer it to vibrate this is vibrating there's like three setting on this it looks amazing doesn't it look it is so beautiful. I guess it's the same color on the other side too. It is vibrating. Can you hear it? So there's like three settings on this one. Let me show you. Let me put this box on the side. So you press this plus button. Now it's a blue. 
it's the second setting. Now it's red. Now it's extremely vibrating. It comes with its own holder, so you can put it with the cover for the brush. Wait. So amazing. Plus, you can buy these heads. I don't I'm giving you one which comes in the packet, but you can buy several ones and you can put it on your stand this way. You can buy a bunch. There's another one here and which is amazing. Amazing. I could have just buy these to show you guys, but because um, I wanted to show you the whole thing and I did not want it to open the one that I'm giving away, I had to buy another one. And I'm going to keep this for now. I'm still using the other one. It's in the toilet. I'm debating if I have to show you that or not. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and leave a comment down below on your favorite skincare routine.